Hey, y'all. Welcome back to Mountain Murders Offbeat. I'm Heather. And I'm Dylan. Hey. Hello. Oh, my God. What? I'm emotionally drained. You are? Yeah. Care to share? Yeah, that's what happens at my job, right? So I got this job in a nutshell. You've Y'all have heard I have a job. Ooh, look at me. Yay, you're gainfully employed. Yay. Um, so a lot of it's just monitoring things, a lot of responsibility, but it's like sitting on your ass. Okay, I'll be honest. Looking at computer screens for in, and such. But when the rubber meets the road, when the shit goes down, there's so much fucking responsibility when on your shoulders. When it hits the fan. Yes. When it blows through a screen door. It just splatters you right in the fucking face, Oh my it? God. It does. And there's and so much. And you just much... have a big shit face. Oh my God. Yeah, that's what it feels like, <laughs> okay. actually. Shit face. Yeah. I'm going to start calling I feel shit face right now. Okay. And uh, it's very stressful. It's emotionally draining. I'm sure there's people out there that can relate to these types of jobs. Yeah, probably and, like brain surgeons. Mm, uh, no, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> but no, I can fuck up, you know, a million dollars worth of equipment just like that. So, you know, I don't have a million dollars. I could now. never work in a position like that. It's too much power. <laughs> And I feel like, power? yeah, it's too much power because I would feel compelled to destroy the million dollars worth of equipment because I'm oppositional defiant and I'm an anarchist. So there's that. I have to fight those feelings every day. You do? Yeah. It'd be like Aria Speedwagon. Like, I just can't fight this feeling anymore. Yeah. I'd be like, I'm just going to do it, man. I'd have to give in. It's for the greater good. Okay. D- Dylan, are you familiar with a YouTuber known as Chris Chan? It's uh, she's also the creator of the character Sonichu. Is that character on TikTok? As far as I know, it's a YouTuber. Okay. Person, so yeah. not TikTok. No, I honestly I don't. I haven't. I never used YouTube like that, like to get like personal. Which I wish I had. I probably missed a lot of good content. But uh, I, I always just like looked up music or, you know. I was like, it's a YouTube person. I, I guess not, what would that be like a YouTube influencer? <laughs> well, I mean, let's say uh, YouTube YouTubers. That's a good ad- adjective. Um, they did it first, right? Right. This, this what the content's evolved into, your own content, making it big. So I think it all happened on first on YouTube, right? I wish I'd had YouTube when I was like six. Because as a child, I had all these characters and was always, like, putting on skits and shows for people. I could have made so much money as a kid. You think so? Yeah. It's too bad I'm, like, not creative now. You'd have... (laughs) You'd have had, like, a little traveling road show? Yeah. Okay. Well, Chris Chan was arrested, get this, Dylan, on suspicion of incest. Ooh. A spokesperson for the Heinrico County Sheriff's Office told People in a statement that Christine Weston Chandler was being held at the Heinrico Regional Jail West facility in Virginia on one count of incest and was transferred to Greene County custody on Monday. So in this press release, the Sheriff's Office confirmed that they had received information involving sex crimes against a family member on Saturday, and an investigation led to an arrest warrant being issued. The police department where um, that or did the arrest here of Chandler is located in Ruckersville, Virginia. Ruckersville. Get some. Authorities said Chandler, age 39, is currently being held without bond and the investigation is ongoing with additional charges pending. Uh, Chandler did not return any kind of request for an interview. Now, a friend of mine posted this on our like regular, you know, like on Facebook. And I was kind of reading through another article about it. And so this Chris Chan, I I guess, kind of rose to fame a bit on the app 4chan back in the day. Okay. Yeah. But has made comment, and, and Chris Chan is also a trans woman, but has made these comments about raping her mother and also stealing money from the mother. Is this what happened? Because, I mean, obviously the first question that comes to mind when you hear this is, who did she do the incest with, right? I think we're all thinking that. It was was Chris Chan's elderly mother is the victim, according to other news reports. And Chris Chan had posted this information, like, online in some sort of chat forum or something like that, like, making making jokes about it. 
Uh, okay, I don't even know what to say. I'm speechless. It's a horrific story. You victimize your own elderly Can mother. Can you believe there are people in the world who do shit like that? Well, it, it's these types of things, and I think um, maybe true crime fans uh, feel this more so than other people. Maybe it's why we're into true crime, because we just cannot believe what humans do to other humans. It's just insane. And it's almost, I think... Uh, one reason I listen and and am and, and I'm a fan of true true crime is I'm looking for a reason. I'm like, why? Well, I think we you know all I mean? want to understand the psychology behind this type of thing. But incest, pedophilia, I mean, these are just the most taboo, like the worst of the worst sort of situations or crime. I mean, I guess. Just People say crimes that are just, they're unimaginable to me. Well, so you're rolling up rape, which is horrific. I think people know the way I think about it. It should be right there with murder, honestly. You know, full out brutal rape. and But it wrapped up with incest and attacking your own mother. So yeah, I, don't, I can't even wrap my head around that. It's mind blowing. So there's a little shocking piece of true crime news to uh, put a damper on your day, right? We are continuing our series on Missing in the Park, Dylan. Yeah, I've been waiting for the second installment. Well, our second installment, I decided we would jump into some of the conspiracy theories surrounding what happens to these missing persons. Yeah, and I think it's a unique situation with uh, people that go missing in these areas. Is uh, It almost begs for you to come up with some wild reason for it to happen, right? So it, it breeds conspiracy. Well, Paul Letus, the man who authored the Missing 411 books, had some theories about, you know, what happens to these folks. So we're going to get a little bit into that. He also says that there are these clusters around North America where these various disappearances occur uh, from national parks. And that if you look at maps of missing people, they're kind of clustered in certain areas. Which is kind of interesting, right? To think that maybe there's some linking factor or something between missing persons. Well, I mean, I think it definitely, I've seen some of those overlays over the map of the country. And they're very interesting. That and the cave, supposed cave systems. And, um, but I think that it's the, it's obviously something to do with the environment. Either it's the environment itself or something there. In that area that causing this to happen. Well, he has linked together some different factors that he says come into play when people go missing. A severe weather event often happens during or soon after a disappearance. And with our story last week about young Audie Powell, that's exactly what happened. Remember, he goes missing and then a huge snowstorm comes in. Yeah, that actually affected the uh, search, search, right? Yeah. Yeah. They often happen in the late afternoon, which seems to be the case with our last victim, Derek Luking. Like he, you know, went missing in the afternoon. So on the weather events there, just for for my mind, you're saying they can happen before or after the disappearance and still be Well, it's usually during or soon after. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Bodies are often found in previously searched areas. Definitely something strange. Clothing is often missing, especially footwear, like the boots. Well, that's weird. Are removed from from various uh, victims or folks. Disabled high intellect and those of German origin seem to go missing in strange circumstances more often. I'm sorry? Uh, People of German origin? According to Paulides with his missing 411 books, yes. Okay. This is his theory. Watch out, German. Sniffer dogs can't detect scent oftentimes, and granite rock is often in the area of a disappearance. Okay. I mean, my, my skeptical, I mean, I can listen to conspiracy theories all day for pure entertainment, honestly. Some of the wildest shit you've ever heard. But I'm always apply skeptical thought to whatever the person's saying. And, and I'm not. I won't go into it now. But I have multiple. Like, hey, it's fading light, or you know, the you know the weather got bad, or blah blah blah. Or there's a granite every fucking where out in the woods, dude. So well, there's that. <laughs> 
So let's look at some of the different theories as to what could be causing these national park and wilderness disappearances. There are a lot of conspiracy theories out there. Now, the most common belief shared by folks is that many disappearances in the backcountry are caused by misadventure, slipping on a rock, falling into the water, breaking a leg whilst climbing over obstacles. You get the idea. Well, yeah. And, that, and that, that's logical. So accidents. The number one reason for disappearances is accidents. Yet you might expect that a lot of these accidents are near or close to established trails and that people would be found. And as we know, in many cases, they are not. No, never seen again. Exactly. Other theories, like the second theory to, to explain these missing persons, is animal attacks. Grizzly bears, mountain lions, as well as snakes can be a factor for hikers in many countries. There have also been stories of eagles carrying away small children. But animal attacks by larger creatures, such as bears, would have evidence of blood or other body remains or drag marks. Well, yeah, and honestly, I don't know the numbers. I don't think animals attack and kill let alone totally get rid of the, you know, body, uh, many people. And not, not at this rate, nowhere near this rate. And have you ever seen, speaking of eagle, eagles carrying something off, have you seen the little dogs with the eagle vests, uh, the bird, the prey vests on? Yes. The little spikes and shit? Yes. Are they not cute? Yes. <laughs> it's, like, it's like a little um, it's a little Mad Max dog, dude. So cute. Oh, my gosh. I'm, I want to get a dog just so I can dress it like that. But that, I've seen an eagle uh, or a hawk, rather, um, grab very large chickens right in front of me. So it wouldn't, I don't think that's a... Um, Totally a crazy thing to think that they might grab a small child just like laying on a blanket or something on the ground there beside well, you. Well, I mean like a an infant, a baby, yeah, a toddler. Totally. I think it's possible. Foul play. So serial killers have certainly operated in the wilderness. I mean, for example, a, a serial killer we've covered on the podcast, Gary Hilton, known as the National Forest Serial Killer, murdered several hikers in a period around 2007. It is likely that there are many unsavory type of characters like Hilton operating in the wilderness and many have not been apprehended over the years. Well, yeah, there, there must be, there has to be. Hikers and visitors to the wilderness sometimes have fallen a uh, victim due to discovering maybe illegal activities. Like for example, somebody growing marijuana. Yeah, growing the marijuana on parkland, that's very and common. And a person hiking, goes off trail, stumbles upon a huge marijuana grow, could end up murdered. Well, yeah, typically with these uh, smaller grove, grows like that, the people will, especially when it gets close to harvest, because they try not to go back and forth so they don't bring attention to where it's at, they'll just go stay out there, camp out there, you know, and harvest or whatever. And, uh, yeah, and you have to be happen to be an unlucky person who sees their... Um, their criminal activity is worth a lot of money. Well, one case in particular that sticks out for a lot of folks when we talk about someone who goes missing and that there's a prob a probable um, or probability. I got, okay, I'm sorry. I can't talk tonight, guys. Um, that The probability is that he was actually murdered, targeted by criminals. And that is the case of Arvin Nelson. He disappeared in the Vin Ventana wilderness, which is in... Los Pedros National Forest in California. And so he is someone that people believe was targeted by criminals. Well, yeah, I'm sure it happens. Um, and if you want to know more about him, he went missing from the Big Sur State Park. Um, it's a pretty wild story. So uh, I would Google that, check that out if you're interested in finding out more about his case. Now, one of the bigger, and because the other things are very logical explanations, accidents, animal attacks, the thought of criminals or that there could be some sort of serial killer operating. I mean, those things, okay, those make more sense, right? Those seem more valid explanations yeah. yeah and we can't overlook just getting lost well let's get into some of the kookier conspiracy theories dylan let's do it interdimensional travel and multiverse portals comes up wow you're just really going to go straight to it like that why not okay 
Scientists have theorized that parallel universes may exist in other dimensions, separated from ours by distances vastly smaller than the size of an atomic anatomic particle. Particle. I, I'm sorry. I just cannot speak and I don't have my glasses on right now, so I'm struggling a little bit. These interact with our own universe only through gravity and leakage between universes. Ooh, I have some leakage. This could help explain some basic facts about our own universe, such as like why gravity is so much weaker than other forces of nature like magnetism. The big question that scientists have asked is how do these uh, different universes connect? So in outer space, you've got black holes, and it is theorized that they could open multiverse, multiverse portals. But the massive intense gravitation field of a black hole at that so-called event horizon would crush any object attempting to do it. The event horizon is the threshold around the black hole where the, uh, the escape velocity surpasses the speed of light. So according to Einstein's theory of special relativity, nothing can travel faster through space than the speed of light. But if a black hole is large enough and spinning fast enough, passing through the event horizon might hardly be noticeable. Faster than the speed of light? Yeah. Okay, so you got to hit it going really, really fast. As for portals on planet Earth, their existence is purely theoretical, but these portals could be causing people to mysteriously vanish as they open and close in the wilderness. Well, yeah, some people believe that we do have these parallel, you know, realities, universes, however you want to look at it. I think so. I think that it's all fucked up, and that's why 2020 and... 2021 have just been off the rails. Well, you'll have to join us on Batshit Crazy, and we'll talk about the CERN particle accelerator and that entire theory because it kind of... Yeah, kinda, we're bringing that podcast back. It's hitting home with me, that whole theory that they possibly did something back in 2008 when they they started and turned on this biggest particle accelerator, most powerful thing we've ever made by man. Okay? So, but anyway, um, so then uh, people think there's this thin veil or like just very thin layer between universes. And that sometimes, um, in, in various ways, that veil gets very thin, right? Mm-hmm. To where different fragments from each reality can bleed over into the other one. Is that a good way of saying it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're not. Oh, my gosh. She's not even listening to me. Yeah. That's okay. This is how our conversations no, go. No, I am listening to you. I know you are. Because now you're looking at it. Well, what's really strange is in the Missing 411 documentary... Um, there is one about hunters. Very interesting. Uh, one of the women who's interviewed for that documentary lived in Ohio, and she was an avid hunter, happened to be outside on her own property, like hunting in a tree stand, like I guess hunting deer in a tree stand, and described this weird bl- like blur that just sort of sailed through the trees and kind of came at her, and she tried to take a photo of it. Yeah, I might be trying to get the hell up out there. But it almost sounds like it could potentially be some sort of, like, wormhole into another universe. Like the way she described how it looked, or how this this weird blurb appeared. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you were telling me about that. I mean... Now, that's one of, in my head. I have to live through that event to truly believe that. I mean, honestly, and, and I'm like that about a lot of things, the paranormal, such um, the very fantastical things. Yeah, if that happened to me, I would be blown away. But I don't believe you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, that's. I mean, if you did see something like that, I don't even know. Some people it may drive them out of their mind to see something that's so outside of what the laws of physics and stuff the way they understand it. One of the other theories that goes along with this interdimensional or multiverse theory. Are you going to say it? Sasquatch. Yes. Are cryptids like Bigfoot. That's because some people speculate that a creature like Bigfoot actually doesn't live in our dimension. That it's an interdimensional being. Okay. So here's where you can have fun with a conspiracy theory. And when it's, if it answers questions in your reality or what you think, your, your sound mind... If the conspiracy theory starts explaining things. Yeah. So this quickly explains why we don't have Bigfoot bodies, right? Why we don't find a camp of Bigfoots or a cave with a Bigfoot body or any sign. We just get these glimpses, supposedly, of this creature 
all around uh, the all around the world. You could even say because every society has like a a, a kind of a description of Bigfoot, right? Right. Well, I mean, is it possible that a creature like Bigfoot, Sasquatch, or other cryptids are interdimensional travelers? I mean, that's a theory now in play with both Bigfoot and UFO researchers. Ooh. They're running with it. Um, there was a conference, the Greater New England UFO Conference, held in Leominster, and there was a paranormal researcher there named William Hall who talked at length about ghosts, but he was saying that the paranormal world as a whole is more connected than people realize, um, and that there's this whole idea that Bigfoot is actually like UFO alien and that the more we are able to study quantum physics the more we'll understand ghosts the paranormal and the idea of cryptids dude quantum physics are so scary and when the science and they've they've learned a lot but it's they're learning about something that's just theoretical i mean most quantum science and and the revelations they've had don't really hardly um, i could be wrong here Someone way smarter than me might know that I am, but it's like you can't even apply it to things. You know what I mean? Like we found out this particle does this when you do this to it or whatever, but what does that help? Well, it looks like some scientists, even and writers dating back to even the 1800s, kind of had those sorts of ideas. In more modern times, the theory dates back to 1973, and one thing that Bigfoot hunters are reporting run-ins with is called orange orbs. There are these fast-moving lights that one may think are alien in nature, but they're seen in areas that have been associated with Bigfoot, and they're often seen or spotted around the same time that Bigfoot is spotted or before or after Bigfoot hunters are saying that they've seen Sasquatch. Damn it, man. Orbs. <laughs> Orbs always come into play, it seems like. You think so? I wish I had an orb, like a personal orb. What kind of orb would you have? I always have one that did things that I didn't want to do and stuff. Like it would answer a door for me when it was like somebody I didn't want to see and just be like, oh, Dylan can't come to the door. That's what the orb would say. Well, there are several, I guess, big named Bigfoot hunters. Uh, one of them is a guy named Bill Brock, and he actually spoke at that conference that I mentioned. And he raised the idea about these multidimensional portals. And he referenced a recent NASA document that magnetic portals may be real. He came to believe them when he traveled to West Virginia to study the Mothman case. Um, Bill Penning, another uh, Leominster local, believes it's possible. He said in his first recognized Bigfoot encounter, something large in the woods, it like shook the ground, but then sort of vanished. He found the set of tracks. He thought it was, you know, Bigfoot possibly chased it down and happened to catch some of those orbs like glowing in the area. Really? Yeah. Interesting. So if that alien theory is true, I guess it solves one of the cryptozoology's biggest unanswered questions. Is Bigfoot real? Yeah, and the only other thing I would say about that theory, I mean, it's, of course, pretty wild, is uh, don't be a, a, a dumb human and be like, oh, Bigfoot's stupid. He looks, he's big and hairy. He can't travel. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We can assume what other creatures or things from other worlds or dimensions might look like. So don't be a dimensionalist. There are also some theories about Bigfoot's origin, uh, that the creatures are the prehistoric human rivals, the Neanderthals. And if you think about it, human beings and Neanderthals were battling pretty heavy about 35,000 years ago. So these people believe that they split at that time and went off into the woods and remained like the Bigfoot, neanderthal sasquatch that we know today while humans evolved into what we are today right so they evolved along a different branch yes yeah see now that is less fantastical and honestly to me when i've, I've uh, you know thought about what could bigfoot be this makes much more sense to me of course my, my mind's scientific based or evidence based or whatever but but at the same time it could explain that they are based they're hum, you know human thought a higher functioning creature 
right? And there was bad blood between, uh, I guess, maybe hominins and the Neanderthals. I might be saying homeos. Wait, homos? Homo sapiens, right? Yeah. Homo sapiens and the Neanderthals. The homos, the homo sapiens. Well, we can, well, we can call them homos, but as in sapiens. And uh, so, but then there was that bad blood and they learned to hate. Right. And never interact with because they'll kill you. So that's why they, you know, bury their dead, stay away, stay out of light. Still in this modern day, it still seems improbable. Well, the theory is that while humans were developing technology, building cities, creating empires, Neanderthals were learning to hide in the forests, away from their enemies, and live quietly. Okay, so I guess they would, uh, I'm not going, so they, they function a little bit differently. What their wants and needs are is more, I'm not going to say basic, but more like if we well, were animals. he answers the scientist that kind of perpetuated this theory or whatever, Brock, was saying that one of the reasons why we don't see Bigfoot, because of course skeptics are like, well, why is it so hard to find a Bigfoot? And he says, well, tens of thousands of years of experience with camouflage is why we don't find them. Oh my God, Bigfoot wearing real tree up this bitch. They became masters of their own domain. And that domain is the forest. So, Oh, wow. So you think Bigfoot's dressed up like this? Was it a, a, is it a Gumby suit? A gunny suit? Yeah. Is a ghillie what, suit. A ghillie suit. what you're talking about. A Gumby suit. A Gumby yeah, suit. Yeah, so sure, Bigfoot's got like suit. the ghillie suits and shit. And like when you walk past, like the bush stands up. It's like, fuck you, homo sapien. Yeah. And watches, marches off. Maybe. Okay. Okay. So that brings us to our final conspiracy theory for this show. And that is alien, alien abduction. Oh, I well. swear I'm going to get rid of this mush mouth eventually. So could it be the reason that some groups are more likely to disappear in the wilderness than others? Um, a lot of people believe they are being abducted by aliens for experimentation. So many abductions are in remote areas, far from civilization, where UFO activity has reported, been reported. So one example is Mount Shasta in California. Uh, there's been disappearances from that mountain and also reported sightings of UFOs. Well, yeah, I think in our minds when we think alien abduction, we see the, you know, the uh, saucer like having to hover over the human and tractor beam or, you know, grab whatever. But, you know, if they're traveling interstellar travel, if they're capable of that, there's no telling the technology they have. It could even be something like Star Trek where they beam in, you know, grab somebody, beam out. Or just, you know, who knows? And uh, I said that was our final theory. I'm sorry, it's actually not, Dylan. I'm going to bring something to light that I know you'll be interested in. And we're going to be talking about TikTok. Oh, my God. Now, you're an avid TikTok user. That is um, a salacious It's unfortunate statement. that you don't make your own videos. You're just like a peeper. You're a voyeur. You just like to watch. No, nah, I don't make any content on TikTok. Kinky bastard. He like to watch. I like to see. Oh, hey. So earlier this year, you may remember this, Dylan, January, February of 2021, there were some videos and theories circulating about feral people, like cannibal like people that were living in national parks and wilderness areas. And this whole idea or conspiracy theory exploded on TikTok. Yeah, that must have been before I was a TikToker or I, I missed this. Well, there is a TikTok user named The Present Believer, uh, Ariel, who posted a video about some strange experience she had in the Big Bend area. In her video, she says she was camping with her husband and daughter in the Big Bend National Park. And about the fifth day they were there, they stayed in like a lodge and hung out on the patio. And at one point, she heard multiple people screaming off in the distance, we're going to die. So she claims that she finally heard some woman's voice, I love you, just know that. So she's hearing all these blood-curdling screams, please. Oh, my God. Yeah. She even heard a child screaming, Mommy, people saying, Help, call a ranger. Uh, immediately, they called the police and a park ranger, but they didn't find anything. So Errol explains that they ask about the family the next day, but none of the park employees or park rangers knew anything like about what she was talking about. Dude, I've seen uh, some of this, but I didn't realize what they were actually talking about. Mm -hmm. 
I thought it was like some there's ghosts on the like hiking trails or something, but this is what they were doing because it was saying things like, "Don't answer if they hear you know you hear your name or someone." I'm gonna tell you right now, if I'm out in the woods, woods, and someone starts like scream, blood curling screams, especially a a woman or a man, honestly, a, a kid crying out for help or something would be horrible and scary, um, or someone just uh, whispering your name like like trying to lure you to, off into the dark like a siren yeah like a siren song oh you know just what luring you away if i was a sailor back in the uh, whatever hundreds i would totally die on the rock with the siren really yes if she was like a big titty goth siren Holy on a rock shit. like everybody would be asleep and shit and i would just steer right over that bitch you would drunk as fuck on the l to my what's up girl <laughs> Oh, that was smooth. And she'd be right? like, "Hi, Dylan." I'd be like, "Oh my god, what's up?" I'd be like, "Do you really have to do that sing song you shit out the whole time you talk?" Yes, I do, mm, baby. As I lure you, and you'd be like, "Get the fuck out of here," because you can't sing, bitch. Oh my god! And then you turn into like a, a fucking real mermaid, <laughs> and, and start like super hissing scary. and scared. Yes. Okay. Yes. I missed my calling. I think I should have been a siren. Dude, that was just a screenplay going to be turned into a movie, and it's going to be called Because of Her. Well, after Ariel's video, plenty of other TikTok users started posting their own stories and theories about the bizarre happenings in the wilderness. Now, there are no official reports or any documentation information whatsoever that backs up these claims but you know conspiracy theories are going to persist so uh, among these theories there are people who believe in truth suppression that the national park service and the government authorities are actually trying to keep this information about these feral people like out of the spotlight You know, um, some kind of higher functioning or smart creature like Bigfoot or the Neander, is it Thal or Tall? Is it Neanderthal? I think it's just Neanderthal, bro. Okay. Either way, you know, that have this higher functioning abilities and staying away and and that's why you don't see them or whatever. But feral people, I I don't believe they're going to be thinking like that. The hills have eyes. Well, it's true. You ever, me and you were talking about feral children the other day, right? I was looking up, like, in Romania and shit, like, kids raised with bears or wolves and shit for, like, uh, two years out in the wild with whatever animal that's, like, keeping them warm and shit. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Fuck. It's so wacky. (laughs) Okay. I was raised by wolves. Oh, that's where your insincerity comes from? Yep. Okay. So Little do you know, wolves are not very compassionate individuals. I always seem like a, a... I always thought a wolf and or a wolf pack was a rather sarcastic bunch. They are. They're not very nurturing to human right. children. They're like, oh, is that making you cry? I'm just going to eat your ass. Yeah, that's exactly what they did to me growing up. That's why I have all those scars on my ass. They tried to eat me. It's like little Dicky said, they eat your titties and ass and shit. Yes, yeah. they do. What oh would happen God. if there was a wolf pack outside right now? Because that's what wolves do. I would be scared. I had... Speaking of wolves, I had this super fucked up dream a while back, and I think I told you about it. But in my dream, I was like snowed in at this house, but it was like a big apartment building, but it looked like a house. But outside, so it was like super snowy. We couldn't get the car out. We're trapped. And then like these wolves start circling the house. So we can't get out because the wolves are going to eat us. Hmm. It was a really bizarre dream, and, like, I've never had some fear of wolves. But in my dream, I think they were going to maul me. Was it affordable housing, or was it luxury apartments? Well, I don't know, because it was a dream, Dylan. Well, I say if there's wolves there, I feel like it's affordable housing. Probably. Because there's just wolves running around outside and shit. But I did dream that after we watched that crazy horror movie about the ski lift. What was that movie? I can't can't even think of what the name of the movie is. Dude, I was just thinking about that. I'm pretty sure it was called Frozen. (gasps) That movie was creepy. Oh, my God. Because there were wolves in that movie. So I think that maybe after watching that, it was like my subconscious made me dream about these wolves because there was also snow in my dream. Okay. But can you imagine how 
fucking awful it would be to be like ripped limb from, you know, you're ripped by your limbs, you know, just torn apart by like a wolf pack. Yeah, four or five very large dogs who eat meat every day. <sighs> yeah. Pretty horrible. So uh, this episode is all over the place, but uh, we just like to talk, and I think it's interesting, and I think there's some, some of these cases are really strange. We're going to get okay? back to talking about some of the more bizarre cases next week. If someone is walking, I mean, just imagine, put yourself in their shoes. You're walking because I've been in the woods in this very scenario. You got, you're with you know, four, five, six people together, a couple of you or one of you is just ahead of the pack. There's always that asshole who wants to go off fast and shit and be like, I'm so much better than everybody else. No, I'm just kidding. Everybody moves at a different speed. Some people like to get ahead and explore or whatever or lag behind or stay together. But then they go just barely around a small a, a small turn to a where around the bend you come around it two seconds three seconds five seconds and later they're gone and they're gone you didn't hear anything there's no evidence of them like being drug away or you know forcibly done no screams just nothing and you search the entire area very quickly and there's no there's just nothing and they're never seen again nobody nothing how, how do you fucking explain that. Aliens. Bigfoot with a time watch, bitch. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, do you fuck with the aliens? You fuck with aliens? Since we're talking about little dicky, you fuck with the aliens? Oh, my God. The aliens be fucking with us. Jesus. All right. Well, we're going to be back next week with more bizarre cases of folks who go missing in the park so prepare for that and of course we have an awesome episode coming out sunday august this is something that we've put out on social media but i'm going to make the announcement here on the podcast oh my god so the entire month of august it's a great time to join patreon because the entire month of august our patreon episodes and our mountain murders cases are going to be recommended by patrons so sunday's case has been recommended by one of our awesome patrons stephanie we Hi, just Stephanie. love Stephanie. She recommended this case. It's something that you and I both are like a big fan of the story in this case. So I was very excited to cover it. It might be a hair out of our Mountain Murders Appalachian, uh, you know, range or whatever. But I think people are going to enjoy the show. Oh, it totally is. And it's one of the, I mean, I'd say he could be in uh, a lot of people's top ten. Very going to be a very good story. But I, I want to say that as when I was younger... This case and this person, it, was, it left a mark on me. Like, I've got to know more about yeah. a person like this. It's very fascinating. Because back then, there wasn't true crime 24-7 everywhere you look. And, and just getting that exposure to his story and him, oh, holy shit. Okay. Well, we look forward to that on Sunday. Hope you guys have an amazing week. Feel free to shoot us an email, mountainmurderspodcast at gmail.com. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. What else, Dylan? Uh, we all over the place. We all over the place. That's true. Okay. We'll talk to you later. Peace out. Bye.